Hello and welcome to another This Week in Linux Distro Review. Now today's distro review is not going to be geared toward those of you who are only familiar with Ubuntu, who are only comfortable using GUI tools, who are not comfortable using the command line. Alright, for those of you that are still here, let's talk a little bit about Arch Linux. Arch Linux is a rolling release distro, meaning you install it once, you can install the CD from whenever you want to, and do updates, and you will be at the latest version no matter what. That said, they do occasionally release snapshots, they actually just released one yesterday, and the snapshot is basically just a set of packages at a specific point in time, there is no actual release schedule for it, it's just there are all the packages that come with Arch. Now there's one thing that I have to say about Arch, and that is that they have wonderful, wonderful documentation. If you want to do an Arch install, you go to Arch Linux's website, you go to their wiki and click on the beginner's guide and it walks you step by step through every step you're going to have to take and it works the same every single time. I've actually done the install a couple of times on my laptop over the last year and a half and it worked exactly the same way then as it does now. I did the same install in a virtual machine, ran exactly the same way, did the exact same steps to do the install. Graphics drivers are slightly different because I have of course virtual versus physical. But that said, a lot of people will be confused by the fact that once you get done with the CD and you reboot your system, you do not have a graphical interface. You are greeted by a command prompt. Of course, if you keep following the beginner's guide, you will install some sort of desktop environment if you are so inclined. You'll set up your network interface, your sound interface, you do everything manually. That's the great thing about Arch. You get what you want and nothing more. So let's go ahead and have a look at Arch. Okay, so here you see my GNOME Arch Linux desktop. It's actually running on my laptop. It's still the GNOME desktop. This is by far not the default install. I've actually installed several things on top of it, but if you follow that beginner's guide, like I said, you can get all this stuff. Basically, you just need to learn how to use the Pac-Man system. Pac-Man is the package manager that they use. If I do, for example, a sudo pacman-syu, it goes out and it actually synchronizes their databases. This does the full system update, and if there is a newer, quote, release, this will actually pull down all the latest files. Like I said, there are no releases, it just pushes out new packages whenever they're available, so you're constantly on the latest, the most bleeding edge version. And you see here, kind of an unexpected thing, we've actually got two things that can be installed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes on that. And there you go, it finished the update, no problems, it just gave me the newest packages that were available. In the same fashion, if I wanted to search for a file, I could type pacman-ss with a capital S, or and whatever the package is called. You can actually just search for a word in it. So, for example, if I wanted to search for KDE, it's going to return a big long list of things that have the KDE letters in them. And actually, if I were so inclined, I could install the entire KDE interface from here, just typing in sudo pacman-skde, and that would pull down all of the KDE packages needed to run a K desktop environment. The same thing for LXDE, for XFCE, for Fluxbox, Openbox. There are tons of different interfaces you can install. GNOME is just one of them. I did have a couple of issues running KDE, but that was just personal stuff. I didn't pull down all the correct packages, and for some reason it didn't want to create a desktop folder. A lot of it is my lack of knowledge about KDE, so I'm not going to bash on that because it had a beautiful interface and it had a lot of widgets. It had more widgets with it than the Fedora version had, and that's saying a lot. But as you can see here, it's not that difficult to install software if you're a little bit familiar with the command line. Now, that said, there is not a graphical package manager per se. I'm sure it's possible to install one, but there's not one included. Like I said, there's nothing included by default. And if you'll notice here, PackageKit and Synaptic are not actually available in the default repositories. That actually leads us to something else, though. One of the defining features of Arch is their AUR, the Arch User Repositories. This allows the community to help out in packaging and to put out the latest packages that maybe the Arch maintainers don't want to package or haven't had time to package yet. So what you can do is actually install Yaourt, Y-A-O-U-R-T, not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but it works a lot of the same ways that Pac-Man does. If I type in Y-A-O-U-R-T dash S-S package kit, we'll see if it brings anything up. There we go, we've got package kit, we've got GNOME package kit, all these things that you could install on top of Arch to have a graphical package manager. But through that AUR there are so many packages available. As a quick example, when I was running Fedora there was one package that I was missing and I really didn't want to take the time to find all the dependencies for it. It's GUVC View. I had it in Ubuntu and on their website they only provide the source and a Debian package. Well if I go and type in sudo yaourt s and then type in GUVC View I'm actually probably doing this wrong. It's said they're not to use package build as a root user. I haven't had any problems doing it so far. It is potentially dangerous. They said, you know, it's, it's got all these big red error messages, but I haven't had any problems out of it so far. But you see here what it's actually doing. It's downloading the source from berlioz.de, the place where it actually was created. And it's going to build it for you on the fly. 
That's the great thing about the AUR. They provide a sort of a spec file like you do in Fedora, just telling it what dependencies it needs, where to pull everything from, and how to build it, and it just does all the work for you. And there you go, it's installed. I answered a couple of questions in there that I sped past, but I, these are just things that I've learned by reading it. So let's go ahead and check the package out. We'll go to application, sound and video, GUVC view. Look, it's installed. And there you go, that's me on my crappy laptop webcam. We'll go ahead and quit that now. And that was just one of the many, many community supported packages. I, I honestly don't know if there's much more to say about Arch. You get what you ask for and nothing more. The repositories are enormous, especially the AUR. It is rolling release, so you shouldn't have to install it again. You can build beautiful interfaces with a minimal amount of effort. It is stable, it is fast, and after the initial install, it's actually decently easy to use and keep up to date, if you have a little bit of familiarity with the command line. So that's about it as far as the review is concerned. As far as the installation process, I would give Arch a really low score because it is a little bit difficult to get going if you don't know what you're doing. The documentation associated with it, I would give a 10 out of 10 because there's so much documentation. So, I mean, as smart as you might need to be to run Arch, a lot of that is taken out by the fact that they've got so much of it documented. Now the one big downside that I've found to Arch is the community. Now I've heard a lot of people say the community is wonderful, so it's easy to get along with. I've been on their forums, I've been on their IRC chat room. They've apparently had to deal with so much flack over the years that they've become a little bit hardened. These are the kind of guys that are more inclined to tell you to go read the documentation than to actually help out. But at the same time, their documentation is so good that they can justify that. I've seen some other projects where they say read the manual, and the manual is just not that good. But in this case, the manual is where you need to be no matter what. So getting back to the final review, the interface is wonderful. It's entirely what you make of it. The day-to-day -day usage is very simple. Keeping it up to date is even simpler. Pacman dash capital S Y U and you are up to date. Installing new software is very easy. And there's such a large repository that you can get whatever you can think of very easily. And at the end of the day, I will highly recommend Arch Linux for those people comfortable with the command line, for those people that are willing to read a manual, and actually for those people that have a secondary system or want to put this inside of a virtual machine because you will have to have that website pulled up. But don't take my word for it. Go to archlinux.org and give it a download. Try it out on a virtual machine and see if you like it. Before I go, one last little thing. Go to thisweekinlinux.com. Down at the bottom, I've actually put in a poll so you can tell me what you like and what you dislike about the show and other distros that you'd like to see me review. If you have any distros you'd like to see me review, make sure to put it in the comments below. If you'd like to see any sort of different features on This Week in Linux, let me know and I'll see what I can do. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.